Hi, welcome to Uma. Uma is a short horror game in which you are a worker in a place far from the city, where something that is supposed to be just a Peruvian myth will start to harass you. Um, I picked this up off video. The graphic style looked really interesting. It has these scan lines on the main screen, I guess, but um, I thought it looked good, so I figured why not. Oh my gosh, that amnesia opening. It's been years. Oh, we vibin'. We vibin'. Oh, we're not longer vibing. Oh, we have struck a match. Oh, but I can't see anything. Oh, no, I can. So this is what I mean by an interesting graphic style. You have, you know, your 3D assets in the background, but we also have this like pixelated hand in front. Restore power. Um, I think it's a radio. I can't actually pick it up. I know Uma with two M's is mom in Korean, but I do not know what Uma means in Peruvian. It's a very full trash can. It looks heavy. A bathroom. Wow, that. Oh. Do your duty and flush. Oh my gosh, it's quite dark, huh? It's very red. Somehow I don't think this part of the world is, you know, continuously red. Is that a four loco? Oh my, those things are disgusting. They will get you incredibly drunk, but they are very gross. Oh, what's this? A flare? Oh my god! Why? Camping outside? A very sharp tree? Oh, it's green over here. Milk crates? Can I go this way? Oh, I can go this way. Exit. What are we exiting? Outside? I can't open that. These hills are giving me old school Ocarina of Time vibes. Just one blurry texture that stretches onwards. Green egg crates. Oh, our hand does bounce a little bit when we're walking. That's cute. Hmm. Maybe I missed something inside. Can I go up? I cannot go up. This is a fan. I would expect the electric to be like attached to the house somewhere. But maybe it is inside and I missed it. No, there's not much to inside. You know, instead of in my kitchen, I think I'd just rather sleep in a tent. Hmm. I guess you have AC inside. A fan system. Um, my controls seem pretty limited. Maybe this is a gate. Okay, that is not a gate. A flare, a fire, a tree. Oh, oh, I'm stuck on the sharp leaves. Bricks everywhere, bottles. Oh, well, maybe they're supposed to be logs. I'm not sure. Hmm. A shopping cart under a lamppost. No, we were over here a little while ago, but maybe I missed something. I'm just heading into the spooky darkness. Lamp post back here. What am I missing? Well, um, I cannot jump. 
I guess I'm a little lost. I can run. This looks like more garbage. Mm. More crates. Oh, wow. I'm just blind. I can't crouch. So I can't get in there. Some wood pallets. Darkness. Uh, shipping boxes. Oh, a dead end. Is this a truck? I cannot interact with the truck. Oh, is it a forklift? Although I like that our hand is very different. Everything is super dark. And I wonder if the game doesn't actually need to be this dark. It's just dark so that you don't have to see the super low quality of some of the textures. Hmm. I can't jump. It's E to interact. Here's the exit. Okay, I have my bearings a little bit. I still don't see where we're supposed to get inside. If we're supposed to get inside. Going down the right side of the building. And there's nothing here. Okay, great. It's interesting, we had like two little jump scares i guess at the beginning the can and the rat but we have had nothing since coming over here and it's just dark you just another lamp post but i can't do anything with you either am i missing something else if i hit escape it just takes me out of the game so it doesn't look like there's any options, which is frustrating. You should always have some options. Just blindly walking into the dark, hoping these lampposts will guide me. Oh. Hi. Oh my gosh. Come back to rest. All right. That was a horrifyingly loud noise. Also, why do you keep your generator or your fuse box or whatever completely out of the way? Also, I don't have a match anymore. Are you telling me I don't need one? Huh? I guess that means it's locked. Okay, so we'll just go back this way and pray for the best. We have light now, that helps. I think I would still, if this was me in real life, use matches for these really dark areas because this isn't lit. Like nothing is lit up over here. I guess this is. Maybe the one just wasn't working. Here's the camping spot. Also, would you leave your door open? Oh my gosh. Let's shut the door before you strike a match. Go out and find what happened with the electricity. What's, what's spooky noise? Am I supposed to be seeing something? It's not any brighter on my recording than it is for me to play it. Hmm. 
Well, since it's this way, I guess we'll just go this way this time. I guess our objective changed. Um, still gonna go this way. Man, who knew scary music was all it would take? Oh, I'm stuck. I can't move. I go back to the cabin. Okay. I guess that was simulating a cave-in. I feel like even a kind of silly... Oh! So, okay, I did see that that time. I did see that, playing through the sky horrifically. Could be a bat. Could be an owl. You know, owls make very human ghost noises. It's not too abnormal, right? <gasps> well, that's abnormal. What the heck? Inform my superior. Where is my superior? I have seen one body and it's dead. Maybe there's a phone. Bum bum. Bum bum. Bum bum. Bum bum. You know, my heartbeat is not going very fast, all things considered. My superior is my toilet. Hello? What is this music? Any problem, Fernando? Yes, big problem. Please. Uh, wait, wait, wait. I can't hear you. Blur syndrome. Uh. I love this music, but I'm also horrified. Help. My name is Fernando and I need help. All right, prepare for imminent jump scare. We must fleas. Oh my gosh, where am I fleeing? Oh my gosh, spooky singing. Oh yeah, there was exit. I'm fleezing. Oh no. Oh, I see what's happening. Okay, I must have missed that animation on the last wall because it was shaking so much. I can't fleezing. Where am I fleezing? Uh oh. Oh my gosh. <gasps> A disembodied head? What the heck? <gasps> Are we the disembodied head now? Oh. Uma, a Peruvian tale. Escape, Salir. Salir? Like, leave? Run away? Interesting. Interesting game. I like the way it looks. I feel like I wish there had been a little more texture on some of the things just around. Um, it was very dark for me. Uh, I can't tell if it was just my monitor or if it was I don't know I'll turn the gamma up for the actual let's play so you guys can see better um but there's no settings in the game so that makes it hard for me to want to play it again after tweaking my entire monitor setup just to make it work um which isn't great the singing was probably the best part the disembodied head whatever it's cool that it's an urban legend I'll, or a Peruvian tale. I'll look up more information about that. I don't actually know very many things about Peruvian history and lore and folklore and all of that. So let's see what we find. Hi. So I went and I looked up um, Uma Peruvian uh, folklore and I found this site. It's Quota Personalized Travel, Quotatravel.com. And they have this article on the spook on Spooky Peru, the myth of La Uma in the Sacred Society. I won't read all of it, but I'll focus here. There is a myth told in some parts of the Andes about a witch who has the ability to separate her head from her body and send her head floating above the plains and hills in the countryside to find victims, sometimes merely scaring them and sometimes killing them. The word Uma means head in Quechua? I don't know how to pronounce that. 
but in this case, it is specifically used to refer to a floating head, which gives fright not only because it is floating without a body, but because of its appearance as well. The floating head, or la umla, has very long hair, bulging eyes that don't look human, and a very large or and very large teeth that you will notice even from a great distance. But whom does this head belong to? Some say that she is a young witch who was engaged to a young man who betrayed her, trying to kill her while her head was out wandering. Uh, it is during this time that her inert body waiting for her head to come back that she is at her weakest. It is said that if someone were to put salt on her neck, La Uma will not be able to return to her body, as the link has been severed. If this happens, she will wander bodiless, looking for victims to use her other abilities on, and look for a new body to which she can attach herself to. Uh, La Uma prefers to attack young men, we were Fernando in the game, so that... Makes sense. Just to do the betrayal of her beloved, floating around them to frighten them until she gets a chance to float through their legs, cursing them to an unpleasant demise. Ooh. You know, I have something uh, telling me that that is a pelvic area reference, but who knows? If her victim can get her to follow him through bushes with branches or spiny cacti, her hair will be caught and she will be trapped so that he can safely escape. For this reason, cacti are planted around windows and doors to homes. These spiny plants prevent Luma from entering, keeping those inside safe. Very fun folklore, very fun story. I like that the game is inspired by this folklore. Um, it's very fun to see. However, it could have been anything. In that game specifically, it just happened to be Uma, uh, probably because it was an interesting premise and you can just throw a body down and have a head do some simple spookies. Uh, I think I would have preferred more introduction of elements from the folklore. There was only the one ending as far as I can tell from looking around. I think I probably would have preferred a little bit more. There was enough space and room to have spiny cactus plants around or... Maybe the body is inert in the warehouse and we could get inside and salt it on another playthrough. Maybe you get like the you die ending and then you go back. I would have liked to see a little more than that. I don't know. I think, I think it is a shame that the strongest part was the singing and the ambient sounds in addition to the music. The head wasn't that scary. The body on the ground wasn't that scary. So if you're building for a scary experience, I don't know, a couple little atmosphere elements popping out the can and the rat not that scary the head not that scary maybe even the rocks falling were scarier because it's like oh my gosh am i trapped what do i do it's so dark but the darkness could be my thing oh no those are my thoughts i think the folklore is interesting and detailed enough that you could get away with a lot more in a little game so this is a little disappointing i suppose you could argue as well that you know my expectations do not define the intention of the game maker you know maybe he just wanted a short simple little experience and this is fine um he probably has far more experience with peruvian legends with loma than i do so this is just if i were to do anything about it it's like my personal critique what would make it a good game for me if you liked it let me know if you think it's fine as a concise extremely short little experience i'd like to know that too um, I just like to maybe I'm a little harder than I should be on games like this for the experience that they promise you they give you anyway see you next time thanks for watching hope you had a good time mm -hmm.